Hi guys, in this video we're going to take a look at the deviation from the mean, the variance and standard deviation, examples, and then we'll finish with a summary. So what exactly is variance and standard deviation? We have come across ways to measure the spread of data. Namely, if we have some data, we can find the minimum and maximum of the data. We can also find quartiles, such as the lower quartile and the upper quartile. And we can also find percentiles, such as, for example, the 40th percentile and the 90th percentile. Using the maximum and minimum gives us the range of the data. Using the quartiles gives us the interquartile range, IQR. And using the percentiles gives us the interpercentile range. It can be more useful to consider the variation of a set of data by looking at all data points instead of just some particular data point. Let's say we have some data that goes 75, minus 300, 22, 24, 52, and minus 35. 52, minus 35, 105, minus 53, 400, 21, and 18. Then we have minus 300 as our minimum, 400 as our maximum, minus 35 as our lower quartile Q1, and 75 as our upper quartile Q3. And we can use these to look at the spread of the data, but instead we want a method of finding the spread of the data by considering all of the points. This can be done by looking at how much a value differs from the mean value. Let's say our x bar was equal to 20. This is our mean of our data. And let's say we have a value x1 of the data. This is equal to 22. And let's say we also have x2 and x3, where x2 is 20.5 and x3 is 30. Then we can examine, for example, the quantities 22 minus 20, i.e. x1 minus the mean, as well as 20.5 minus 20, or x2 minus the mean, and 30 minus 20. And we hope this gives us the variation in the data. This is done by calculating the variance or the standard deviation of a set of data. Given some data, 52 minus 300, all the way up to 22, as we had before for our data, we'd like to calculate the variance and the standard deviation for this set of data in order to find how much the data varies from the mean. So how can we calculate and interpret the variance and standard deviation? Variance takes into account how much each data point deviates from the mean. If we have 15, 15.4, 16, 18, 18.5, 19, and 24, and our mean is 18, then we take each data point separately, and we look at how each data point deviates from the mean, i.e. the deviation. Variance is the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. We can rewrite this definition using a general formula for variance. We can find the variance of a set of data by doing the sum of x squared, all divided by n, minus the sum of x divided by n, and then all squared. The first expression is the mean of the squares, and then we subtract the square of the mean. We can introduce the summary statistic SXX to have a better understanding of where this variance formula originates from. We can let SXX be the sum of x minus x bar all squared. We call the SXX the summary statistic. Our x bar is of course the mean. And all we're doing here is to sum the squares of the differences between each value and the mean. If we expand this out, we get the sum of x squared minus the sum of x all squared divided by n, by using the definition of the mean. We can write the variance more concisely in terms of the summary statistic, i.e. the variance can be found by taking the above expression and dividing by n, i.e. 1 over n multiplied by the sum of x squared minus sum of x all squared over n. So alternatively, we have that the variance is equal to the sum of the squares sxx divided by n, which therefore is equal to the sum of x minus x bar 
all squared, and then we divide this whole thing by n. The variance can be used to work out standard deviation. Standard deviation is the square root of the variance. We can also write the standard deviation in terms of a general formula, deduced from the formula for the variance. Because we have that the standard deviation can be found by taking the square root of the variance, therefore we have that the standard deviation can be calculated by doing the square root of the sum of x squared over n minus the sum of x over n all squared. All we have done is take the formula we had for the variance before, i.e. the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean, and take the square root to find the standard deviation. We can similarly write the standard deviation in terms of the summary statistic SXX. Because we have that the variance is equal to SXX over n, therefore the standard deviation is given by the square root of SXX over n. But also, using the definition of SXX, this is the square root of the sum of x minus x bar, all squared, over n. The variance and standard deviation can be represented by certain symbols. We write sigma squared for the variance and just sigma for the standard deviation, since they are related by a square root. We can similarly rewrite the formulae for variance and standard deviation when the data is described by a frequency table. Firstly, the variance, sigma squared, is going to be equal to the sum of f times x minus x bar all squared divided by the sum of f. And if we were to expand this out, we get the sum of fx squared over the sum of f minus the sum of fx over the sum of f all squared. Here we have our mean x bar and our frequencies f. Similarly, as a direct result, we have that the standard deviation sigma is going to be equal to the square root of the sum of f x minus x bar all squared over the sum of f. Which again, if we expand out, gives us the square root of the above expression. The sum of f x squared over the sum of f minus the sum of f x over the sum of f all squared. And again, all of this is square rooted. And again, as before, our x bar is our mean and our f represents our frequencies. When using these formulae for group data from a frequency table, we must first calculate the midpoints, which we use as our x values. So for example, when we have sigma is equal to the sum of f of x minus x bar all squared over the sum of f, and also when we have our sigma given by the square root of the previous expression, the sum of f x minus x bar all squared over the sum of f, and then square rooted, in either case, the x's that we use come from the midpoints in the grouped data frequency table. Our first example tells us that the marks achieved by six randomly selected students for a maths test are recorded, the values of which are given below, 24, 25, 27, 30, 30 and 32. We are asked to calculate the mean and standard deviation of the marks achieved by the six students. Our first step is to recall the formula for the mean. The mean x bar is calculated by taking the sum of x divided by n. Our second step is to calculate the mean. We have our values are 24, 25, 27, 30, 30 and 32. And therefore our x bar is going to be 24 plus 25 plus 27 plus 30 plus 30 plus 32 all divided by the 6 for 6 values. And this gives us 28. Our third step is to recall the formula for standard deviation. The standard deviation sigma is equal to the square root of SXX over N. And by using the definition of SXX, this is equal to the square root of the sum of X minus X bar all squared divided by N. Our fourth step is to calculate the summary statistic SXX. We have our data 24, 25, 27, 30, 30, and 32. And we have our x bar is equal to 28. So our SXX, by definition, is equal to the sum of x minus x bar all squared over all the values of x. Therefore, we have 
24 minus 28 all squared, the first value minus the mean all squared, plus 25 minus 28 all squared. And we do this for all the values all the way through. And we add up all the squares and we get 50. Our fifth step is to calculate the standard deviation from the summary statistic SXX. Our sigma can be found by taking the square root of SXX over N. Therefore, we have the square root of 50 for SXX divided by 6 for N. This gives us our sigma as 2.89 to three significant figures. Our second example tells us that the table below shows the lengths of the most recent phone calls of 21 randomly selected people using a certain telephone company. Here we have our table, and we are asked to calculate an estimate of the variance and hence standard deviation of the length of the phone calls. Our first step is to recall the formula for variance in this context. To find our sigma squared, the variance, we do the sum of f multiplied by x minus x bar all squared divided by the sum of f. And we can expand this as the sum of fx squared divided by the sum of f minus the sum of fx over the sum of f all squared. And again, we need to recall that for these x values in this context, we use the midpoints. Our second step is to work out the midpoints for each interval. We have our intervals as shown here, and our midpoints are going to be 2.5, 7.5, 12.5, 17.5, 40, and 65. Our total is 21. Our third step is to calculate the values needed to find the variance from the table. Again, we have our midpoints, and we're also going to need our fx and fx squared from our formula. So we can have our fx here and our fx squared here. The fx is going to be 10, and then 75, and then 62.5, and then 17.5, 0, and 65. We add these up to get the total of 230. All we have done for each of these values is to multiply f by x using the table. And similarly for fx squared, we have 25 5,62.5, This gives us a total of 5,900. Our fourth step is to calculate the variance using the formula. We have our sigma squared is going to be the sum of fx squared divided by the sum of f, and then we minus the sum of fx divided by the sum of f all squared. This gives us 5,900 for our sum of fx squared divided by 21 for our sum of f minus 230 for our sum of fx divided by 21, and then we square all of this. And this gives us 161 to three significant figures. Our fifth step is to recall that the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. In order to find the standard deviation SD, we do the square root of the variance. Our last step is to calculate the standard deviation. Because we have our sigma squared is equal to 161, sigma on its own can be found by taking the square root of 161. And this is 12.7 to three significant figures. Hey guys, I hope you enjoy the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snappy smiley face and together let's make A-level maths a walk in the park.